Welcome to Christ Life Today, where we explore the glorious realities of life in Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Robert Dahlman. I am one of the directors of Christ Life, Inc. Our ministry has a teaching ministry. We have an evangelistic outreaches. Um, we have uh, a lot. One of our biggest things is free literature, PDF files on our website. Almost everything on there uh, can be freely downloaded as a PDF file, like the one I have in my hand here. This message we're going to talk about today is Renew Your Mind. And um, you can download this file. This uh, It's a PDF file. Print it out back to back. Fold it in thirds. And you have a nice little uh, track type message like this here that you can carry with you, make reproductions of, and use it. We pray the Lord bless you with these types of uh, messages. There are many on there. Uh, Christ's Life was founded by the late Pastor Ron Marr, and uh, he was a prolific writer, teacher, and we've been blessed with the Lord to carry it on. So visit our website, get this message uh, for a reminder after this, after this teaching is completed, and uh, the Lord, we pray he'll bless you with it. So today we're going to talk about Renew Your Mind. And what does it mean to renew your mind? Why do we need to renew our minds? How do we get renewed minds? We're going to take a look at that today. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is read a section of scripture from Romans 11, uh, verse 33, through Romans 12, verse 2. One of the things I would encourage you to do as you read your Bible, sometimes try and forget chapter numbers, and verse numbers because they were not there originally they were added later for our benefit so we could find verses of scripture easy uh, but sometimes because of them and I'm not saying get rid of them but sometimes because of these numbers the chapter numbers the verse numbers sometimes we end stop reading at a point that we think we're done with a section and really it's a false break. It's a false uh, stop that we artificially put in there. So we're going to read this section with, and not stop at the chapters um, because I believe they go very strongly together. So Romans 11, 33 through uh, chapter 12, verse 2. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that's the section we're going to talk about a little bit here. Uh, first, let's look at what does it mean to uh, have your renew your mind. Uh, the Greek word for renewing means a renewal, renovation, a complete change for the better. That's essentially what the word, uh, the Greek word used there, means. The mind is our intellectual faculty and the understanding. It's our reason, um, our capacity for spiritual truth, understanding, the power uh, of considering and judging soberly and calmly and impartially. This is uh, what the word mind means. So renewing our mind is completely changing for the better 
the way we think, and how we understand and judge spiritual truth. Let me repeat that. The renewing of our mind is completely changing for the better the way we think and how we understand spiritual truth. So let's take a quick look at some of, the, some of this passage here um, that we just read. <clears throat> the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments, and His ways are past finding out. In verse 34 and 35, uh, it says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been His counselor, who is given to him first that he should repay him? That's essentially what's saying. Who's given the Lord any counsel that he owes us and he's going to repay us? His ways are beyond searching. His ways are beyond finding out. He is glorious. And he is way beyond our, our ability to understand without God's help. There is a passage of Scripture that tells us that we have been given the mind of Christ. So it's interesting. In and of ourselves, this is where we're getting to the renewing of the mind, in and of ourselves, His ways are beyond us. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Well, praise Jesus because of his death, burial, and resurrection in our place for our sins. He's given us access to the mind of Christ. We can know the mind of Christ because Galatians 2.20 tells us it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. So Christ, of course, knows the mind of Christ. We have access to that. We have access to the mind of Christ. Now, we're all, almost all of us are probably very familiar with uh, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We're, most of us are very familiar with that. But you see how easy it was to jump over verse 36 of chapter 11, because there's that artificial chapter break. Well, I want to focus on verse 36 for a second here. Romans chapter 11, verse 36. This is a tool that you can use for everything in your life, I believe. It says, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. So, the way we use that in everything in life is we ask those three questions. We ask, is it of Him? What we're doing. Is it of Jesus? Did He give it to us? Is it of Him? The next question we need to ask ourselves is, is it to Him? Are we doing it for His glory? It's got to be from Him, given to us to do. We've got to do it for His glory. And, uh, oh, I missed one, through Him. So it's got to be from Him, it's got to be done through Him, and it's got to be done to Him or for Him. Has He given it to us? Whatever it is you're doing, anything, has He given it to us? Is He doing it through us? And are we doing it for His glory? Romans chapter 11, verse 36, comes right before uh, 12.1 and 12.2. So in 12.1, Paul's beseeching us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Our bodies. He says our bodies. Offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is our reasonable, some translations will say, spiritual service. Paul encourages and exhorts us to give our bodies to Christ for His glory, for His honor, and to do it holy 
And that's our reasonable service. And how? Don't be conformed to this world. It saddens me to no end to see Christians who try to look as much like the world as they possibly can without crossing the line. Paul says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't look like this world. Don't try and get to be like them. But rather be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we can prove, we can show what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, so the next question is, why do we need renewed minds? In the last section, we saw that who has given counsel to the Lord. Well, why do we need renewed minds? The answer is simple. We need to think like Christ and be in agreement with His thoughts and plans. In Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, we're going to read a couple of verses here that uh, will give us some insight as to why we need renewed minds. Uh, it says, God speaking, He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Pretty straightforward. We don't think like God. His ways, His thoughts, so much higher than ours, so much different than ours. We need to have our not minds renewed. We need to have a dramatic and complete change for the better in the way we think and understand spiritual truth. God's ways are far superior to ours. Is it possible for our thoughts and ways to line up with God's? The answer to that is yes. I made allusion during the last segment to the fact that we have the mind of Christ. Well, right now we're going to take a quick look at a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 uh, and verse 16. It says, and this is actually, if you think back to the earlier section, this is a bit of a repeat of that section in another passage of Scripture, but this is where it tells us we have the mind of Christ. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Well, that's pretty much the same thing what we read in the earlier section. Verse 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. That is how our minds are renewed. As I say read frequently, Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Our minds are renewed by Christ living through us, by getting into the Word of God by dying to self or reckoning that we've been crucified with Christ and every single time self does something it's not right. Christ in me is how I succeed in renewing my mind. How I succeed in Christian living. I take and I, 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 I often say this, people who have uh, seen me teach before or whatever, I'll often lift up my Bible and I'll say something like this here. Every single time that I disagree with this, every time, I am wrong. Let me repeat that because this is a position of safety in understanding the scriptures and, and renewing our minds and thinking more like God. Every time I disagree with this, every time I'm wrong. Now, you might say, well, why would you disagree with that? Well, trust me, folks, there's a lot of things in the Bible that I don't particularly like. What? You're shocked, right? Well... I don't like the fact 
that Jesus tells us that narrow is the gate that leads to life, and broad is the gate that leads to destruction and hellfire. I don't like the fact that most people, many are going to find the path to destruction, and few are going to find the path to eternal life. That's something I don't like. And if you listen today, you'll hear people claiming the name of Jesus Christ who no longer believe in hell, who teach that hell doesn't exist, who teach that uh, everybody or most people are going to be saved. Well, this is what I'm talking about. Renew my mind. Every time I disagree with this, every time I don't like this, for some reason or another, every time I'm wrong, God's Word is right. That is a position of safety. Trust me. We are going to come across things in this Bible that we don't like. We're going to come across things in this Bible that go against our, our teaching, our upbringing, what we think we know. We're going to find things in this Bible that disagree with what we believe. Guess who's wrong? Not God's Word. This is truly a place of safety. If we can, every time we read the Bible, if we can try and come at it from the position of uh, we are not right, God's Word is right. And if we can come at it from that kind of a position, then we're in a place of safety. When I come across a verse that, that, that I say, what? That can't mean that. Well, it does. And what it means for me is I need to dig in now and find out what is rubbing me the wrong way. If we hold tenaciously to our own preconceived ideas and we refuse biblical correction, we will never be in a position where we can have our minds renewed. It's just not going to happen. The Bible tells us that all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God can be raised up and matured and grow in the Lord. So, the bottom line here, we need our minds renewed. And it comes through, largely, through the Word of God, praying according to the Word of God, seeking God to bring us in alignment with the things that He has said, and not contradicting His Word, whether we like it or not. Really, folks, I'd much rather think that everybody's going to be in heaven than in hell. But that's just not what the Bible says. Few are going to find the path that leads to life. Many are going to find the path that leads to destruction. God said it. I'm not about to try and change it. In our next section, we're going to look at how do we get these renewed minds. All right, in this final section, we're going to look at how do we get renewed minds. And we're going to take a look at several scriptures um, that talk about this. Uh, there's no better place to get a renewed mind than the Bible. That's where we learn to think more like God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if we want to think like God, we need to dig into His Word in prayer according to uh, what he says. So we're going to read a section of scripture here. I call this the WWW that really matters. In today's world we think of the internet when we think of WWW, but in this passage of scripture we're going to think of the washing of the water of the word. Now that's the WWW that really counts. And Ephesians uh, chapter 5, 
uh, start at halfway through verse 25, 26, and 27. Uh, talks about even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So, this is in the context of marriage relationships, and uh, as Christians, we are the bride of Christ, and God will have a spotless, blemish-free bride. And we need to start the cleansing with the washing of the water of the Word. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all sin. But as we walk in this world, we get dirty still. And we need the washing of the water of the Word to help us renew our minds, to help us to think right, to help us to uh, think in alignment with what God says and how He thinks. As we saw in the previous section, it is possible. He has given us the mind of Christ. So we can indeed learn to think more like God. And we learn that by looking at the Bible. As I said before, there's many things in the Scripture that don't line up with what we think. Uh, you know, look at the Beatitudes. <laughs> Blessed are you, happy are you when you're persecuted. That's not the way I think. I think I'm happy when I got a good job and a lot of money. But God says, blessed or happy are you when you're persecuted for his name's sake. He doesn't think the way we do. He thinks different than we do, and we need to learn to come in line with him and to think according to his ways and, uh, and, and learn more the way he thinks. So, the washing of the water of the word. Jesus is going to sanctify and cleanse us as a bride for himself. And he says, and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So the word of God is how we're going to be cleansed. And Jesus is going to do it in and through us. We can't do it ourselves. But he uses his holy word to start that cleansing process. I've said it already uh, a few times, um, but the next passage that we're going to look at is uh, death to self, uh, recognizing that we have been crucified with Christ, and that's in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and I'll read it, even though I've referenced it before. It says, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, we need the washing of the water of the word. We need to know that we cannot do it. We've been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. So Jesus in me is the key. So for me to have a renewed mind, simply stated, means less of me and allowing more of Christ to live through me. Because he's a gentleman. He'll never force himself on us. He'll never kick us out of the way and say, get out of the way, I'm going to do it. No, he wants us to yield to him, to submit to him. Uh, and then he will do it through us. The next passage we're going to look at is in Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 27, which tells us, uh, let's go back to verse 26, Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, that's you and I, if you know Jesus Christ, we are his saints, to whom God would make known what is 
the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So as I said with Galatians uh, 2.20, the hope that we have, the hope, the, the way for our minds to be renewed is yield to Jesus Christ. Christ in me is the hope of glory. And with a, another couple sections of scripture, Romans 8 verse 13, uh, For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So we need to put the flesh to death, the deeds of the body. Uh, earlier we saw we need to offer our body as a living sacrifice. God has called us to put our flesh to death, the deeds of the body, and offer our body as a holy sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. That's comes through getting into the Word of God. That comes through consciously tr agreeing with God when we disagree with what we think should be the case. And lastly, we're going to look at Romans chapter 6, verses 11 through 15. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin... Therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it and the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. But, what then? Shall we sin because we are under grace, under the law? Not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. We're right back to the beginning, offering our bodies as living sacrifices. Jesus in us, Christ in us, is the hope of glory. And that is the way that we renew our mind. Yielded. To Jesus Christ. Be blessed in his name. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information about the ministry God has entrusted to us, please visit our website at www.christ-like.net. Our Christ Life site offers many free downloadable resources. We hope you will visit us online soon and that our ministry will bless and strengthen your Christian life.